Hello YouTube, Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review for you, as is usual. We're continuing on with the German series of beer reviews, as you might have guessed. This time we're going to go to Bavaria and we're going to revisit one of the breweries I reviewed for you just a few days ago, in fact. And uh, I really enjoyed the uh, the Doppelbock beer from these guys, and it's, like I said in the video, it really is the sort of benchmark of the style, if you like. But today we're going to have a little look at the Klosterbrauerei Andex once more, and have a look at their Bergbock Hell. So we're changing the style of beer completely really and having a look at one of their lighter beers instead if you want to have a little look at my Doppelbock review the link to that is in the in the video description there as is the link to the brewery website so check those out if you are interested and I also have another few Andex reviews for you coming up as well so subscribe to the channel if you are interested in that so as is usual with my beer reviews I'll just take you through the brief history of the brewery and as I say you can look in the video description and see the brewery website if you're more interested in that and as I always say if you are simply interested in the taste of this beer then just go on towards the second half of the video and you will catch that particular segment so anyway, in past times the brewing of beer was as much a part of the daily chores as was, you know, baking bread. And uh, this was true of a lot of cultures in southern Germany, pretty much all of them in fact. But the beer was brewed at home for the family's own consumption or it was brewed jointly in the village brewery in a sort of commune brewery if you like. But some of these breweries still operate in this manner today, particularly in the Franconia region or the Upper Palatinate. Franconia of course in Germany is famous for being the, the area with the highest density of breweries per head of the population. And I think that's in the world, in fact, as well. So likewise, the monks at Germany's numerous monasteries brewed beer for their own consumption. And this was the foundation of the Benedictine monks of the Andex Monastery in Terngenzi, who began brewing their beer in the year 1455. And apparently before this, they also had an, ext an extensive knowledge of brewing already. But the Benedictine monks have apparently been serving Christian hospitality for centuries. And in chapter 53 of the Rule of Benedictine, which St. Benedict actually wrote himself, it says, says here, let all guests who arrive be received like Christ, for he is going to say, I came as a guest and you received me. And apparently that's from uh, Matthew chapter 25 verse 35, if I'm reading the, the notations correctly. Christians, please correct me on that if I've read it wrong. But thus the guests to the, the Andex monastery were treated to a helping of the Andex beer. And apparently the Benedictine monastery in St. Gallen is considered to be one of the monasteries who embraced, embraced this sort of monastery beer culture to the full. And uh, while but the building was never completely for their monastery, the plans apparently showed space for no less than three breweries, and apparently each brewery would produce a different type of beer. So the first type of beer was a simple thinner beer for the poor pilgrims and guests. The second was a normally brewed beer for the monks and then the third was a, a particularly strong beer for the abbots and high ranking guests. And in those times apparently the concept of beer quality was uh, closely linked to the strength of the beer but that's changed quite a lot today. Though throughout Germany the monks uh, are largely regarded as the first professional brewers and back in the middle ages much of their experience in brewing actually came from observations and writing down their experience. And Many monasteries actually collaborated with other with others and wrote their uh, their findings down with each other and shared the, their sort of brewing knowledge in that way. But they were also the first to become well versed in other types of food production, such as sausages, bread, cheese, milk, and a whole host of other things. But beer has been brewed in Andex since the Middle Ages, when Albrecht the Third of the House of Wittelsbach, who is the Duke of Bavaria, apparently founded the Benedictine monastery on Andex Mountain. Now in 1850 the monastery became the possession of the Abbey of St Boniface in, uh, in Munich and Peter Magnus Sattler left a huge imprint on the brewery as it is today. He modernised the monastery and all the outbuildings which prepared the brewery for the times ahead and in 1871 he converted the brewery to steam power and then in 1893 and 1894 he re renovated the cask barn and the brew house res respectively. Now Pater Augustin Engel and Maurus Ratt were actually responsible for other developments at the brewery such as the malt house in 1906 and a new filling facility in 1925 and then again in 1958 but in 1968 the malt house was closed and uh, brother Oswald Azer, the last brewer of the Andex monastery actually went into retirement so the brewery was actually beginning to suffer from a lack of space at this time on the Holy Mountain and the Abbey was then faced with the question of either having to close the brewery or put it down cash on a new building and actually build a new facility and they decided to do the latter and under the, su the supervision of Pater Daniel Gerritsen a new building was actually constructed at the foot of the Holy Mountain and thus the brewery had the space to grow and this process actually began in 1972 and many additions and alterations have been made to the brewery over the following years. The filling building was 
was completed in 1974 and the fermentation and storage cellars began operations in the year 1984. Uh, Pater, Ansel and Bilgrey also expanded the brewery sales division during this time and in 1990 to 1991 the bottling facility was quite uh, severely renovated and at the suggestion of Abbot Odillo Lechner light and dark vice beers have been added to the range in 1993 and 1997 respectively. But today the brewery are committed to continually modernising their facilities to maintain a steady business and uh, security for their employees of course and they've also been presented with the EMAS certification so this is the Eco Management and Audit Scheme I believe that's a European Union award in fact and many of the breweries in Germany really kind of pride themselves on this sort of environmental sustainability and responsibility approach and it's actually a really a cool approach in Germany I think a lot of companies could really learn from uh, these guys and there's a lot of the craft breweries in America do this as well so I think a lot of the bigger companies could kind of learn something from that but the brewery apparently source all of their ingredients from Bavaria and all the hops thus come from the Tetnanger region which is the biggest hop producing region in the world and of course all of this beer is brewed in accordance with the Reinheitsgebot of 1516 the Bavarian purity law that was later extended to all throughout Germany so let's get on with the tasting of this guy that's your brief history of the brewery I'll bring up the camera and let you have a little look at the uh, the label and the bottle cap and stuff of this guy as you can see on the label there I'll just turn the light off again I'm still getting trouble from that as you can see on the label there this is a picture of the Andes Monastery at the foot of the hill I think in the last video I said that this was the the old one but this apparently is the one they're currently in today I looked that up because I wasn't sure when I did it before you can see it says Zeit 1455 which is obviously when the brewery was founded there there's the top label with Bergbach Hell and you can also see this is the, the Andex standard bottle cap on there and I think that's the monastery crest there or the town crest I'm not quite sure I think it is actually the town crest of the Andex town of course but you can see it says on the bottom here uh, brewed in accordance with the German Reinheitsgebot and uh, brewed at the close at the close to Brauerei and uh, so quite a cool pre presentation of course and as you saw in my last video all of these labels that they have for Andex it's basically the same label but they do uh, they change it for every beer so without further ado let's get on with the tasting of this guy so to tell you the style of this one it's a seven percent Hellerbock and apparently this style of beer is usually um, quite malty but it's got just a little bit of hop character but it's not overpowering or anything like that so it should be quite interesting. So it's a 7% on the Richter scale if you like and it's uh, as you can see a little bit of smoky opening there so let's get it out and into the glass. Should get a nice bit of head on this guy. As you can see it's poured quite nicely. Oh, just, just went a little bit overboard there. But yeah, just get the last of it into the glass. Okay, so we're sorted now, of course. So as you can see, a really nice, sort of completely kind of bright golden straw colour clear beer. A lot of little bubbles kind of coming up to the top of the glass here. You can see as it is a two-fingered, really white frothy head in here. And it's a really, it's a really attractive looking beer, in fact. It's not really a bumpy head at all, definitely frothy crystal clear it actually looks like some of these uh, kind of you know these premium beers that you get it looks like that but it's obviously because it's Andes it's going to be a lot better than that so it's a really attractive looking beer lots of little bubbles it looks really appetizing so in terms of the aroma here it is very kind of malty you're getting a nice sort of big dose of uh, of bread and yeast here yeah, a lot of kind of bread and yeast there. It's quite a doughy kind of bread um, aroma that you're getting from this. It is actually quite sweet. And it's got a kind of underlying caramel bit to it. It's, it's really, the caramel is quite a deep one in this actually. Definitely just a big kind of dose of, uh, of doughy and, and bready kind of yeasty character to this it's really interesting and a nice kind of waft of caramel as well and there's just a little hint of kind of floral hops with this guy and just a little bit of fruity character but that's very faint the most uh, prominent feature of the aroma definitely is the kind of bready and yeasty character with a nice kind of waft of caramel in there as well so let's give this guy a taste and see how we get on so yeah, as goes with the description, very, very malty. Um, 
but yeah, a really bready malt base and the caramel's just in the background. Not quite as strong in fact as the aroma would make you think it is. But it's actually a fairly sweet beer in fact for the type of it. The bread has just a nice kind of sweetness to it and it's probably the yeasty character that's helping to bring that out and the caramel as well. The caramel flavour is kind of sitting right on the back of the tongue which does it just nightly, nicely and you've, you've got that really nice bready and yeasty character to it. It's, it's definitely a sort of white bread character maybe with just a little hint of grain in there which complements it quite nicely. You don't really pick up on the grain and the aroma I think but there is a sort of grainy character to the bread and it works really nicely for the beer. Definitely really a really really nice malt base to this one. I really love beers that can bring out this bready flavour and that's part of the reason that I love German beer so much. There's maybe even just a little hint of toasted character in here along with the caramel but after that you're getting a sort of wet grassy character if you like in the hot part of the beer and there is just a little hint of the uh, of citrusy flavours as well but the hop part is in fact very mild it really is it kind of comes and then it just goes like that and then the the aftertaste is definitely the caramel the caramel becomes more prominent in the aftertaste and you've got just a nice little bit of that bread dough at the front of the tongue but it really is prominently the caramel that is sticking through in the flavor of this beer really really nice uh, beer and i don't i actually don't know if i've ever tried a heller bock before so this might be a unique beer review for you so far I've never tried this beer before now. I really don't know if I've ever tried a Hellerbock before actually. But yeah, really beautiful malt base on this one. Nice and bready, yeasty sweet with some caramel in there and then just a, a really kind of faint hop finish to it and that's exactly what they were saying they would go for with the style of the Hellerbock. In terms of the mouth, it's definitely mid-bodied and it's got a slightly oily mouthfeel and just a little hint of dryness in fact, but it's not too dry. It's, it's not really a refreshing beer, it's definitely an oily one with more of a dry character in fact and there's a nice little bit of alcohol warmth in there that goes, it mixes really well with the caramel part of this beer, so that's obviously the box side of the beer coming out. And the Heller beer is obviously the more the Heller beer is obviously the more kind of bready malt based. So they've mixed the two sort of styles of Bock and Hellas beer really well, in fact, in my opinion here. And you pick up a little bit more of the roasted character as you go through it here. The carbonation with this guy is definitely is is very soft. In fact, there's it comes in with just a teeny teeny bit of attack but then it smooths out really well as does all good quality German beer but this is a really really interesting one like I say I'm not sure if I've ever tried a Hellerbock before but this one in particular seems to kind of combine certain characteristics of each style really well you've got the nice sort of really bready and yeasty malt base that's typical of a German Hellas with the mix of the, the, the nice kind of rich caramel backbone here and they've done it really really well with this beer I don't know whether I would quite say it's as good as the Doppelbock beer because that, that really is a benchmark of the style but this is another really really solid beer and like I say I'm not sure how common this act, this style of beer is but when you see something with Andex on it you know fine it's going to be a good beer and I would say give it a try you know what have you got to lose you're trying to beat one of the beers from one of the best breweries in Germany of course so give it a try and see what you think and if you like the two styles on their own this one kind of combines it really well so it's always interesting in that regard as well so I hope you found my uh, my beer review informative with this guy please let me know in the comments section your own thoughts on this beer I'm always interested to see whether my kind of uh, picking out of the flavours works in the whether I'm getting the right things or not and if it agrees with what you guys think but as I always say beer is subjective but um, as is usual please let me know in the comment section like I say check out my other beer reviews and uh, check out the brewery website if you're interested in that further and please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff thanks again for watching my beer reviews and I'll be back soon with another one and I have more Andex beer for you to review for you as well so I'll catch you soon cheers <laughs>